People are usually deeply attracted by earthquakes, volcanic eruption, floods, landslides, and uh, also by cosmic impact, the only real natural disasters, also by hurricanes, all kinds of natural disasters. People, but let's say us, probably it doesn't work, um, like to get, to watch and to get every piece of, of information about those kinds of natural events, following TV news, uh, reading books and watching catastrophic movies. In other words, it seems uh, they, we, like catastrophes. Why? I have an answer. The reason is because we finally were all born by natural disasters. Uh, and that's why we definitely love them. I, I have been always attracted by catastrophes. Uh, as a child, I dwelled on pictures of school books representing eruption and uh, volcanoes. And as an adult, as a geologist, I visited almost all volcanoes on Earth. And as a divulgator, I analyzed a lot of natural disasters all over the world, flooded city, landslides, efforts of earthquakes, and many rivers of molten lava. Uh, I remember while I was doing an interview with the head of national civil protection in Italy, just in front of one lava flow from Etna volcano in Sicily, uh, one incandescent boulder came off just uh, from the front, and everyone um, ran away in all directions. As a, as a geologist, knowing the situation, we climbed up again the channel without hurry, but the cameraman wrongly went back along the same direction of the flow and fell on his back. We pulled him back at the last moment, but uh, he didn't want to come there while I should have been there the whole day. Lava has hypnotic effect on me. Okay, <laughs> yeah, there is. Uh, there is no animal attracted by the end of the world like a man who is attracted by the possible common end of his own species, especially if it's far and apparently mysterious. Mm -hmm. There is a natural inclination to the apocalypse, possibly in reduced scale, um, which emerges from many aspects of everyday life. Mm, as if we were in some intimate need of it. Uh, for instance, when we slow down to see what happened on the opposite road lane, where are the crashed cars, the police lights, and the sheets of victims. Or when we slow down to see if someone is still trapped under the rubble of a collapse. There is something atavic, an ancient root that constrains us to observe uh, the disasters. With the relief that uh, we got away with it, but it's not only um, the reassurance, because for the moment we avoided it. Uh, it's, it's something more. Probably the distant echo of ancient catastrophes uh, from which we managed to escape uh, from the beginning of, of our lives on planet Earth. Mm, universe, planet Earth, mankind, all were born by natural disaster. And that's, that's why, in spite of victim, victims and damages, of course, we expect them, essentially we belong to the catastrophes. And in some way, we love, it, we love them. And that's what I'll try to show you. Uh, First, people do not really know how old is our planet. 
Mm, that's the best reason why uh, they don't know how natural disasters forced mankind path on Earth. Earth is 4.65 billion years old, an impressive number, even difficult to imagine. Uh, to better understand this concept of deep time, we try to compare the Earth's age to a one millimeter scale and then to a Formula One Grand Prix. The better you understand how deep and long is the Earth's age, the better you know how, how is important the role that natural disasters can have on our history. Uh, let's compare, please, Sil Elisa, come here, thank you, <laughs> on this part here, probably. Let's compare um, Earth's age to a one millimeter scale, like that. Okay. Now, uh, in this comparison, Earth's age, 4.65 billion years, and one millimeter scale, uh, mankind arises in the last fraction of the last millimeter here. For a, to have a better idea, dinosaurs went extinct around 14.5 uh, centimeters from the end of this scale. Thank you, please stay here just a little moment. If we, comp if we make a comparison with a Formula One Grand Prix, humankind arrives when the, the last car reaches the checkered flag, as, if we, as we saw only the rear of the last car at the last lap out of 45, the dirt of age, knowing absolutely nothing about previous laps, uh, start, pit stops, uh, accidents, uh, overtakes, and so on. But probably the best comparison, the reason why uh, Lisa is still here, uh, is um, we, we can represent it in this room right now. So please, uh, uh, Lisa, can you open your arms like that and stretch your hands like that? In this Oh, no, like that, okay. Okay, let's try to have a comparison uh, between one space in between the hands here and one time the Earth's age, 4.65 uh, billion years. Let's assume that the moment of Earth's creation is here on, in, on the tip of the middle finger of the left hand here. And today's day is here on the tip of the middle finger of the right hand here. Now... Thank you. <laughs> we, we prepared everything. Um, where are we as humankind now? Are we at the eight of the pulse of the left arm here? Are we in correspondence with the head in the middle here? Or on the elbow of the right arm? No. Uh, with this nail file, I will shape the middle finger, the nail of the middle finger here, and the history of humankind is extensively included in the dust that will fo that fall on the ground. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, as if to say, if you have time, natural disaster will certainly occur. We human beings are children of one catastrophe. Of one catastrophe. In fact, more than one. Without that initial collision with the planetoids with the mention of Mars, uh, there wouldn't have been seasons on Earth. And, uh, we, and without uh, the catastrophic aggregation of particles to the drift, even the, dirt, the Earth wouldn't exist as a planet in the universe. And moreover, even the universe without that initial catastrophic Big Bang. Life on Earth, the evolution, the man himself, wouldn't be imaginable without those ancient cataclysms. In some way, they reverberate their ancestral, ancestral echo still today in the universe. A background vibration that we have in our minds from the beginning of our lives, always. Uh, it reminds us how perpetually our catastrophic origin, 
the, list, the, sound, the listening to the sound memory of Big Bang in itself is an extraordinary announcement of disaster at universal level. And without uh, earthquakes and uh, uh, volcanic eruption along the African Rift Valley there, we wouldn't have been separated b uh, from other big apes and we wouldn't have been evolved apart to become the naked monkey that we are now. Five million years ago, the African continent was hosting the big apes from which our ancestors derived, um, placid lively, living uh, between the branches of trees of an immense rainforest. But at a certain point, African earth crust have broken and fractured in uh, longitudinal direction. Volcano cones and craters, and craters were opening everywhere along that direction. And the swelling was raising Earth's crust, dividing the eastern sectors from the central ones. <laughs> the clouds, full of rain, coming from west, stop, were stopping in the middle, in the center. And uh, were nourishing the copious rainfalls that were invigorating the immense rainforest there. So that uh, in that region, chimpanzees and gorillas continued to placidly live like before, to live like before. But on eastern region, something has dramatically changed. Those regions weren't receiving any more the rain, and the forest was enormously wasted away, leaving space to the savanna. The family of the high primates is now divided in two. On the west, everything is, is, the, same, is the same. On the east, uh, the changes were dramatic. Uh, without the protection, as you can see there, of the forest, those animals climbed down from trees and started to run. First thing we, we did was to run. They developed a big brain, they started to speak to each other, and they achieved the fire. In practice, they become homo. The differentiation of hominids from other higher, higher primates is a consequence of the tectonic activity along the African Rift Valley. And Lucy, our most distant ancestor, she probably participated in those, uh, seismic, in those seismic and volcanic, volcanic catastrophe. We, children of uh, a cataclysm that broke in two the African continent, shouldn't forget the tangent route there. Volcanic eruptions has genetically sifted us and marked us forever. This is the Toba volcano, Indonesia, Sumatra. 76,000 years ago, more or less, uh, the mountain, literally disintegrated by rumble that had to be heard all over the Indian Ocean and the Asian continent. A huge column of ashes and scoria reaches 80 kilometers, eight, and the 100 kilometer craters is still today the biggest crater in the world. The effects of that eruption were final and global. The ashes have, me, have maybe almost completely obstructed the penetration of sunlight. And uh, the planet, the whole planet, was rolled up with dark and cold of a classic volcanic winter. The decrease in medium temperature on entire Earth got around five or six degrees Celsius. And the um, main consequence of darkness um, is the was the reduction or stop of photosynthesis. Therefore, plants disappeared, and herbivorous animals too, and consequently, the carnivorous ones. The big predators and, and the human beings they simply starving to death, one by one, to the, to the threshold for extinction. 
for almost 20,000 years, uh, the representatives of Homo sapiens were reduced to to few thousands, may, maybe maybe less, uh, forced maybe forced in region with the microclimate mysteriously warmer thanks to local causes. That's the only reason we survived. Uh, the genetic studies indirectly confirm the risk of extinction. Contemporary, genetically, the, the, um, the contemporary human being's genetic patrimony is so similar that appears strange they evolved without any obstacles since, they appear, since their appearance around uh, 200,000 years ago to nowadays on the Earth. Uh, a bottleneck, we called uh, it a bottleneck, by means of which the genetically patrimony of, of human beings drastically reduced and then extended again, starting from few identical examples. The fact that the uh, universe, planet Earth, and mankind were all born by natural disasters and catastrophes could explain, of course, in spite of victims and damages, beyond fears and uh, prices we must pay, uh, could explain better why we belong to catastrophe, and in some way we love them, we like them. Here you have a look to the active volcanoes and earthquakes on the on the on earth the, the next one you can see the distribution of human population on the same earth we have just one earth next one okay um, don't don't you don't you see something strange yes exactly the same distribution people live the region natural disaster have taken place on moreover we only live where natural disasters occur. We ourselves, and we ourselves see that far from terrorize us, accident and disaster attract us. We are talking about big one, we are watching catastrophic movies about Pompeii or Krakatoa, and a lot of documentaries on this same subject. subject. This is not only because seeing a catastrophe means avoiding it. Uh, probably it's because our region was catastrophic at any scale, from universe to earth season to region of man from a common ancestor with apes. Earthquakes and volcanic eruption along the African Rift Valley conditioned the, the, the identification of first human beings. And we can't Forget the tangent cradle in which we win it. Finally, the Toba mega eruption uh, carefully checked and sorted our, the humankind, making it genetically uniform. We are children of disaster. And as all children, we love our parents. Thank you so much, everybody.